Asian markets rose in anticipation of more data coming out of Europe and the U.S. In China, hopes are fading for the government to take more action to stimulate the economy, at least for the time being. I'm Deborah Khan. You're watching Asia Today. I'm joined now by Beijing Deputy Bureau Chief Aaron Back. Okay, Aaron, um, China has so far succeeded at least in taking the hot air out of its property market, but how much longer can it really turn on and off the taps to manage its economy? Well, so what's happened is that there was some very weak economic data that came out last week. And this has created a certain amount of impatience in the marketplace for the Chinese to take more action to support growth. Uh, and uh, the central bank here has a history, quite annoyingly, of making moves on evenings and on weekends. So there was a lot of speculation that the central bank could act to uh, stimulate the economy further over the weekend. And that didn't happen. So today, Tuesday, markets were up. But on Monday, the local Chinese stock markets were down quite sharply on disappointment that no such action was taken. Okay, and we saw, obviously, industrial production, exports, bank lending come down. Um, the government, obviously, um, I guess everyone, what they were anticipating was a cut in the reserve ratio um, requirements of the banks. That didn't happen. How likely is that to happen um, maybe in, in the near term? Well, so, I mean, I, I think more cuts in the reserve ratio are very likely. Uh, as to when... It's really anyone's guess. You know, the central bank is very unpredictable. I really have to stress. It's not like in the West where there are scheduled announcements of central bank policy decisions. The central bank could cut the RR right now as we're speaking. I, I have no idea. But what's happened, um, uh, what we highlighted in our story today, is that recently a few uh, researchers affiliated with the government have come forward and basically said, look, the central bank has done enough for the time being. Central bank cut interest rates twice this summer. And it takes some time for an interest rate cut to feed through into the real economy. Uh, you know, uh, it takes a long time for a company to decide to take out a loan at a lower interest rate. It takes a long time for that loan to be used to build a new factory or something like that. So there's, there's lag times in policy. And so what's happened recently is that some people affiliated with policymaking in China are saying, look, we, we have acted and there needs some time for that to take effect. So I think what we're seeing is a little bit of a push-pull between the marketplace, which is very impatient for things to get better, and policymakers who are urging a little bit more caution. Okay, is there any sense as to what that time frame could be? I mean, you know, like in terms of when the government me um, introduces their measures and how long they will um, allow in order to see the impact of those measures. I mean, at what point can the market really judge if um, the government is feeling like the economy is actually slowing too much? Well, look, I, I, there's no doubt that if things keep getting worse, the government will act. Uh, it's a crucial uh, year for China with the leadership transition coming up, and they definitely don't want to see things go off the rails. So if the data keeps deteriorating, there will be more loosening. You know, as to when exactly it may happen, I'm hesitant to make a forecast. It's very unpredictable. Uh, what I would say is that there is typically a lag time of at least a few months between when an interest rate cut or a reserve ratio cut takes place and when you start to see effects in the real economy. And there has been you know, two interest rate cuts in June and July. So it, it's not really realistic to expect the results of those interest rate cuts to already be showing up in the data. Okay, great. Thanks very much. Ehrenbach reporting from Beijing.